Yeah. Yep. So after I create my circle, I'm just going to, because uh, when I sketch, I tend to be really messy. So I'm just going to clean up the rough lines until I have like a decent edge. You could leave it if you want. It would again add to the messiness of that painting. Cool, good enough. Okay, so then the orange behind it, one measurement I found was that the edge of this, the edge of the um, orange behind this one goes to about the middle of this orange. And the right side edge of this, the front orange, goes to about the middle of the orange behind it. I know it's confusing, but I promise it makes sense. So the if I go to the middle, this is where my one orange is going to come out. And then if this, if this is the middle of the orange behind it, then it comes out to about right there. And then feel free to go into your orange when you're creating your circle, that's okay. Good enough. And then I'm gonna go in and erase the lines behind. And again, I'm gonna clean up my lines. Am I moving too fast? Okay. Can you check our uh, oranges after? Our yeah, I'm go before we start, I am going to walk around and check everything. It's okay. Personally, I wish mine moved down a little bit more, but oh well, too late now. Okay. So next we're going to draw out the leaves and I'm going to explain to you the leaves while we go because some of them are a little weird and leaves are very specific. Um, there's a rhyme and a reason to leaves. The first one I'm gonna do is this one, which you can barely see along with this, these two, and then I'm gonna move clockwise around. So for my first one, there's a stem that comes out and then like a little spike off of it. And then off this one, just kind of a rough shape. Okay, so stem, it's gonna yeah. press real dark then. So it's kind of like a, tr a rough triangle with, or like a genie lamp or kind of a boat maybe. Yeah. then your leaves will be small or they can go off the page. Your leaves don't have to stay on the page if you don't want them to. I'm going to do this orange, this leaf that is on top of this orange right now. So first I have to do that stem coming out. So I'm gonna do like an upside down U shape. And then from there, I'm going a little bit over top of the orange with like, not exactly a straight line, a slightly curved line. And then, so this leaf right here, because all leaves are like this, they all have that vein in the center, right? So this leaf is more like this, where you see this is the underside of the leaf, and then this is the inside. So this is the outside of the leaf, and this is like the inside of the leaf, right? So you're seeing it bend a little bit. To achieve that bending look, what we're going to do is we are going to create like a, a sad face, if you will. So we're doing this leaf right now, this one right here. 
that's on the small orange, right? It's, it, yeah, it's on top of the small orange. Yes. So the only problem is, is that you guys don't get a lot of like, I'm going to move this over a bit. I'm going to move the painting around while I sketch. So we have this like cl closed eye shape. And then we are coming up with a second line that connects in. So we have this like eye shape shape. It looks like an eye because like this looks like an eyelid. And then like, if you put a circle here, you get a weird eye. There we go. So we have three lines. We have that outline and then we have a line that goes in the middle. I probably should have just went with that. So now we're working with this line, this leaf right there, I'm trying to find a decent spot for it. There we go. We're going with this leaf right here. Okay. So this leaf comes out about right below the other one's stem. And then it makes this um, sad rainbow shape, like a sad face rainbow shape. And then it does the exact opposite through the orange and comes back out. So we created this like eyeball, another eye shape, essentially. And then we can erase the line that is behind the orange. this leaf right here. So this one, if this is the stem, right? This is what the leaf is doing. So you don't see the stem because the leaf is covering the stem. Does that make sense? Okay. Which is why you have this like flat surface up here is because it's doing that and you can see the like tension that the stem creates within the leaf. Does that make sense? Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is this leaf is going to come out right here with like just a straight line. It's fine. Or like a, like a curved. And then from those edges, it's going to come down and then back into this point. And I want it more on an angle. This is me being picky and not liking the composition. You don't have to do this, but I wanted it more on an angle. So yeah, more like that. And then at the top, you can kind of, to create that tension, kind of um, round it off a little, little bit. So when I erase it, it looks more like that. Putting back. We following along? Okay. And I'm going to walk around and like help everyone with their uh, drawings. So don't, if you, if you feel lost, don't worry. Okay. So the next one is going to be this little tiny leaf that sticks out. I want it to come out of, I want it to point to like the circle. The, I'm sorry, I want it to point to the middle of this orange. So I'm, I essentially like just with my pencil bring down kind of like a, a center mark and then create like a triangle off of that one. So this center, so basically this was my center. I'm essentially just bringing down like a line just to create that angle. And then I'm 
putting in my leaf. And then when I erased it, I'm erasing that center mark too. So if you can do that without drawing onto your page, go for it. But um, I wanted to show you guys a visual example of what's going on. Okay. So we have four more leaves and I want you guys to understand what's happening here. So I'm gonna take my time and explain them, okay? Because if you understand the shape and the position of a leaf, you'll be able to properly paint it and not get lost within it. Because, I mean, who here hasn't gotten lost within their painting? Like, what is going on here? I don't know. So if you understand what it's going on, you'll be able to better paint it. So I'm going to draw everyone's attention to this leaf right here, right? So the stem is coming down and then it's coming up and out and kind of creating this like crescent moon shape. And then this right here is the outside of the leaf curling in. Does everyone under, can everyone see that properly? How it looks like this is the inside of the leaf right here, but then this is the outside because it's like curving around. Does that make sense? Okay, so the way that we're going to draw that is if this is my center of my orange, I'm going to create um, a like a circle, uh, sorry, a curve that's going to come and like touch the edge of the orange in front. And then it's going to curve around. And I want this to be like more natural. So even if yours doesn't like end up the same way as mine, that's fine. It just has to be like a natural uh, uh, spiral here. You guys see how if you were to continue this line, it would create like a spiral shape. <coughs> From there, I'm going to create like a secondary. So if this is the tip, I'm going to come back and create and like touch it right there. Where is the edge of the orange? Over here, we got this one right here. So this technically the way my orange this is technically the way my orange looks behind it yeah does that make sense does that help okay i'll erase that after and now to get this shape because that shape is pretty important the, the outside curling in from that same point we're going to come in and create a smaller arc that goes in. So if I erase my orange marks and just leave my leaf marks, that's why I'm erasing them like well as I go through. Does that make sense to everybody? Before we uh, go on, yeah, yeah. That's okay. So this is your middle. Um, can you that's the big leaf. Yes, that's the leaf that curved around. This is the like it rounds around. That makes sense. 
I see you get lost. Absolutely. Yeah. I told you. This is unnecessary. Yay. Um, uh, is that okay? And then, so. so which one am I going to use? Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, that's good. We don't need the center of this. So that's, that's the center of this. Oh, okay. Well, I know it's a little big, but it's an example. Exactly. With my art. art. With my art. Oh, oh. You know, so in other words, where is my orange with me underneath the link? Right here, sorry. Oh, thank you. I want to erase them before actually going in, but yes. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Cool. So we good? Top. Well, we have to do the bottom. I will see you. Nice. Nice. I wish probably. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, Come on. It's a healthy thing. We got to have vitamin C. <laughs> yeah, you know, How is this? It doesn't matter if you're not centered because you can watch. I probably don't remember what's going on. Correct. We're going to make this orange. Oh, yeah. Orange. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what's going on with it because if you get lost in your painting in the sketch portion you're going to get lost with it in the painting section we've all done one of those paintings where we've been like i don't know what's going to happen here i'm going to keep working with it and hope that it recovers and like fixes itself and it just looks like a mess we've all done that absolutely <laughs> so the most important thing is that you understand what your subject and what is happening within your painting, even if it looks different than mine. Okay, so that was I'm gonna go. So now I'm gonna go to the leaf underneath it. This one comes out about here, and it comes out. And I ask you not to make your lines perfectly straight because um, leaves just look weird. That's not a thing. And then it's gonna come out. This leaf is kind of fat, so it's coming out almost like a B from this edge. And then it's kind of making like a we an interesting leaf shape right here. And now this is kind of like this leaf is like curling, but you can't see the other side. Now you have two more leaves. And these ones are going to be easy to compare to the other ones. I promise you that. The first one comes out from about here. And then it comes out like that. And I'm just, I'm just drawing them for you so you can see. And the second one comes out from about here and goes like that. So if I were to... But can we see how this one looks like... Wait... Now I'm lost. Never mind. It's it doesn't matter. Um, so then it comes out with this like eyeball shape right here. And then this one comes out like that. And that's it. That's all the drawing that we're doing. Does that make sense to you all? Did that did I guide you guys through that? Okay. Okay, cool. And then I'm erasing this line because this is not necessary. Now, something I want to do is, for me personally, I'm not going to erase because I want to give you guys like a very clear example of what that looks like. Also, I want to see if I like it or not because sometimes I like the sketches underneath paintings. So maybe I'll like this one, who knows? I'm trying it out. This is the second time I've done this painting. So I get to make that decision. What line did you erase? The uh, orange behind the first one. So this front orange is a full 
empty circle. There's nothing in there, okay? We can spend a few minutes and lift. If you wanna lift off your heavy graphite, go ahead. And then we'll move on to mixing. And since there's people missing here, I'm going to steal one of these palettes. Because then I'm going to be the same color as the guy. I'm going to get lost. If I take this off, I'm going to leave it in gloss. Take what off? It's dry. Don't have to leave it. Yeah. Yeah, leave it. It's fine. Mm. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> The nice thing about art is you have the artistic right. right to make that decision. If you feel like you're going to get lost within your painting, if you don't erase or if you erase your lines, then don't do it. Don't mind me as I clean this painting or this palette. Oh yeah, and I'll show you guys how I clean my palette. Okay, thanks guys for being patient while I clean that palette. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to mix um, a really a light, nice orange. For my orange. Yeah, mixing an orange for my orange. You can, but I would suggest mixing your color with a larger brush. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever I mix colors, I tend to go with a larger brush just because it picks up a lot more paint. But if, and then I'll switch over to a small brush if I want to go smaller. Does that make sense? Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my cadmium red, which is that orangey red. And I'm going to put it in its own palette. Nope. And then I'm going to take my cadmium yellow and add that one in. What is this color? Cadmium yellow is your very bright, sunshiny yellow. I'm mixing an orange. So I'm mixing my cadmium red with my cadmium yellow. Yep. Until I get like a really nice orange that I like. I'm getting close. I think I want a little bit more orange. Or yellow, sorry. I want a little bit more yellow. You're welcome. That's why I'm here. You can put more red if you go to yellow. How come blue looks green in the background? Green? So then I'm cleaning my brush. Um, I'm going to dab it off a little bit. It's not dry, but it's also not sopping wet. And then look how little I pick up. I'm just touching the tip of this brush to it. And that's it. Okay, I'm only touching it with the tip. 
And then I'm going to lightly, this is the first layer. We're working very light. Also, I'm sorry? Do me the yellow first. No, I mixed the orange on my palette. Yeah, right. Okay, and I'm taking a little bit of that off. And then I'm going in and putting a light layer of orange over top of it. We're working in layers, so it's going to look very washed out. And they're, it's supposed to. Now, notice where, notice where it's white. That is me being messy and not completely covering up my orange. If you guys like this look and want to keep these white areas, then don't cover your paper all the way. Allow it to have some like spots bleeding through. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's uh, more of a yellow shade. Just went straight into. The I don't have yellow. That's mine. Let's see. This, even before I touched it, it was orange with it. Oh, what is it? Here, here, here. Here. Just keep going. That's it. And that's it. Here. I don't want them. Oh, she got the yellow bone. Hey. Sorry for bothering you. Good. So now I got it. So, so red is very overpowering. It yeah. takes a lot of yellow. So the brush is wet and I just have to dab it. Yeah, it's not like soaked. I took it out and then I kind of just and then went in with it. Let's try it now. Oh, I see what you did. So then I'm just taking it and I'm like roughly filling it in. I'm not being perfect. I'm allowing white areas to remain white. I'm going to do the same thing to the orange behind it. That's okay. This is just the first layer. It's very light. It's not my true color at all. This is just the color that I'm starting out with. This is... So around the stem, too, I'm avoiding... I'm leaving a little bit of white area to kind of hint at that stem. I just picked up much less of my paint. And going in and not making, and like really emphasizing the fact that these strokes, see how we use, when we usually do it, we usually make sure that the, the orange would be like one solid color, right? Right here, you can see all of my hard edges. And the more, and that, and as we layer and layer and layer, that's going to build. The roughness is going to build and build and build. And that's how you kind of get this stippled, like, texture look that I have right now is because I'm not being perfect and I'm allowing those hard edges to really, like, bleed through. Like, you, can you see how this is not one color? That it's, I'm, I've layered colors over top of each other and stuff. Embrace the mess with this painting. I promise you it will, the more, the messier it is, the more you'll end up liking it because it has more character. We don't. If you want more yellow, what you can do is pick up some of your cadmium yellow and you can go in and just add a layer. 
Oh, we're doing two of them. Of of yellow. We're doing the both of them. So if you want it to be like lighter, go in and add a layer of cadmium yellow to your warm spots areas. There's a plug near you, so if Henry, you guys want to bring a desk lamp, it's an option. When you guys are ready to move on, we're going to mix the green of our leaves, the base green of our leaves. Yep. Yep, I put yellow right here and right here. Yep. Did you add your yellow? No, I didn't. Do we need it to dry now? We're going to mix the uh, green of the leaves, the base green. Which is going to be um we are going to, yeah. Here. Yeah. Oh. But since this is dry brush, it should dry pretty quickly because we're we're they're not very wet. These since we're working dry brush, it'll dry by the time we finish our leaves, it'll be dry. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sap green. Ooh, it's hard to get a green out of this. Yep, we're taking our sap green. And then we're mixing it with cadmium yellow until we get like a nice, um, a very light yellow green. Okay. Good enough. You have enough. I promise you, it goes far. And then we're mixing it with yellow. And I'm going to go in and slowly add my yellow until I get like a color that I'm happy with. That's the bright yellow. So mine is a little too like mine is a little too lime green for my liking. So I'm going to add in some of my um, yellow ochre, which is the mustard orange or yellow, just to bring it more of um, like an earthy tone instead of like a limey tone. If you like your lime color, stick with it. But this is the color that I'm going for, is like a pukey yellow. It's 
perfect. And then I'm going to go around and very lightly paint in every single one of my leaves and my stems, minus the white parts if you want to keep those parts white. Yep, except if you want to keep white parts, then be mindful of where. You can move, you can like switch to um, a thinner brush too, if you are not confident with your brush strokes. Yes. Another one of the small. This one, all the bristles are horrible. You know what I mean? I have this one. Which? Ah, I have green on here. Oh well. You're filling in every single one, right? Yeah, except if I want to leave like messy white spots, I'm allowing messy white spots to bleed through.
So the process of this is going to be that for the oranges specifically, we're going to be continuously adding the same color orange to a new layer. What I have done here is this is my first layer covers the whole thing. My second layer only goes around right here. And then like my third layer only goes right here. And then my fourth layer only goes right here kind of thing. And as we um, darken, as the shade gets darker and darker and darker, that's what creates the illusion of a 3D look. Does that make sense? Okay. Did you have a question, Nat? Yeah, I forgot. Ah. <laughs> uh -uh. Ask when it comes to you. So do we have to mix the orange now a little oh, bit darker? Yeah. What color do we keep adding? That same orange. We're adding the same orange until the very end when we're going to mix it a little bit darker. So that the next coat now is the same orange. Exact same orange. Yep. And the way I'm doing oh, we don't add any color. We're not adding any color. We're just darkening it up. And notice how my brush strokes are not perfect. 
And I'm doing that to give it that textured look. You could even start a little bit on one side and then you could start a little bit on the other and then move to the back and then these will be dry by that time and then you can go back over top of it and it'll start creating a very textured look. Yep, the same orange. We're going messy. We want that messy look. So I'm, this is what I'm doing. And then I'm going to move out to the back and then I'm going to go back and fill it in. But because I'm going back and I'm allowing this one layer to dry, it's going to start creating a lot of texture because watercolor is transparent. You're going to see the layers underneath it through. Julie, except for the part of the job, I'm painting the whole rest of the orange a second layer. In a messiness. <laughs> You know what? There are parts that I really want to play with that I really don't like. I'm just forcing myself to embrace the messiness of this. I'm not going in, I'm not correcting. I'm just I'm just allowing this to be what it is because I want to see um I want to see how messy this can get at the end result. Okay. Now we have our second layer on our oranges. Now we're going to add the second layer on our leaves. We are going to be darkening up the green for this one though. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my ultramarine blue, which is my dark blue, and I'm adding it in to my green. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of brown. There we go. 
So I added a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of that burnt umber into it to make it like this more um, natural green, I guess, leaf green. And then I'm going to begin to darken it in a very textured way. Sorry, which blue the dark? Yes. And the and the burnt. And the burnt umber, which is the brown. Yeah. And then add more green. Whenever I do the mixture, it's like dark, yeah. so I have to put uh, green. Yep. Yeah. Let me help. Um, this is a little kind of story. Oh, okay. So the one that we created the first time? Yeah, okay. So you just finished that. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm adding to the uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I see you. You're going to have to lift them.
So next I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber to my orange, just to darken it a little bit. And then I'm gonna go again with another layer, roughly. Yep. So we're going to add burnt umber, a little bit of burnt umber, which is the brown, to our orange mixture, just a little bit, and then um, add another darker layer, but make sure that it's like farther away from the edge than the first time. Just burnt umber to the orange. Dark. Yep. Yeah. And yellow. Put it around. I just put it around in another like like a uh, less yep. of a crescent. Burnt umber is brown. Correct. Um, just like a like less of a crescent moon. So every time I like keep on going a little bit farther back, a little bit farther back, a little bit farther back. So this one goes about right here. So all right there. It's very subtle. We have about one more layer to do on this one, and then um, we're gonna do the leaves one more layer, and then we're gonna go into the background. We're all very quiet today, so I know you're qu concentrating. Thanks. Orange. I mean, I have more layers. There you go. Usually when uh, my, my theory is if I have to ask, then it's it's uh, either a yes or a no, depending on what, like I've already answered my own question if I have to ask. <laughs> We're going to add another dark layer to the leaves. We're going to mix more blue again. We just keep on going darker and darker. That's the trick to this painting. So I'm going to add more blue. The ultramarine. Then I'm going to add a little bit more of that brown just to make it a little more of an earthy color.
You know what? Now that we're getting more into details, I am going to switch to like a smaller brush. We're adding another layer. Is it supposed to look like brown or? It's supposed to look green. Okay. Yeah, good choice. I like uh, all the shading on your leaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is very reminiscent of your style, Terry. <laughs> you already have this. Because it's half white and half dry. Yeah. <laughs> That is shading under one. I really like the shading of these. I know these are looking like they're really well together, but why are you thinking to the milk? I don't think it's so tough. Yeah, it's for texture on or just very, very Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's okay. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mix a paint spray, which is this really, really dark background color. A Payne's gray color. We are mixing the ultramarine blue. Is that the darker one? That's the very dark blue. And we're going to need quite a bit of it, so don't be shy. Uh, the brown. The dark brown. And the dark brown. And we're going to grab the brown. We have brown. Just keep adding. I'm okay, so I need more. There you go. See how I have like, see how the combination kind of gives me this like gray color? So then I'm going to go in and darken it even further with a little bit of black. The background. Oh, the background. I wanted a little more blue. Look at, uh... Okay, so now that we have that color, what we're going to do is we are going to go in and we are going to take our clean water or we're going to take our water. Actually, if you don't have clean water, that's fine. And that's might be preferable because that in itself will add a little bit of color to your painting. So actually, I'm going to take my dirty water and I'm just going to start um, wetting the areas that I want this color to go into. I'm not wetting the whole thing. I'm just doing this section by section. And then when it's wet, I can add my very, very dark color into the corners and allow it to bleed through. You can even move, um, you can even like, move your painting around to like have that color spread and don't be afraid to go too dark you want to go dark with this yes um it's blue with the brown the dark blue with the brown and then a little bit of black it's called a Payne's gray that we're looking for All around. Um, I'm going over around. Notice how there's a little bit of orange here. We're going to add some orange there. So um, when you get to the point where you're doing orange, I can do it for right now. I'm going to just take this area right here. I'm going to wet it. And then I'm going to put in my orange. So the background is wet on wet. Just like around certain areas. If you want these drips, 
like right here, the messy drips, what I did was I just took my small brush and I like just lightly pulled down. <laughs> and if it looks dirty if it looks messy that's the fun of it embrace that Correct, in certain areas. And then if your painting is wet enough, you can also like move it around. If you don't like this style of background, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. You could just float in some other nice colors. I personally love really messy backgrounds, so. So then notice up here, there's some like orange as well as right here too. So I didn't go all the way around I added orange around here too. I also added in some like like some dots and stuff to like create the illusion of like messiness. I'm dabbing instead of brushing to just kind of deposit paint there.
Okay, so then do you notice how our oranges aren't really popping off? Like it, they kind of look like the same orange, right? So the way that you're going to go about fixing that is you're going to take a little bit of that shaded color that we just created, and you're going to go in and start really carving in some shadows in there. No, 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 the, the shadow color, the Payne's gray that we created. This, this background color that we just created. So I'm taking some of that and I'm really making sure that it gets really dark along the one edge specifically. And I'm making sure to add shadow underneath this leaf as well, because it is going to be casting some shadow onto the orange underneath it. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'm going to add in the shadows really dark into the leaves as well. Especially in this corner. How do I fix this? I went to like this. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you. 
I find that the more shadow you have, the more it's going to pop off the paper. Don't be afraid of going too dark with your shadow. I like my way out here. I think it's dark. Yeah. I, I also added dark shadow. Also separate. There's so many separate here. No, it's fine. It's fine. You like it now. That's good. Like that? Yep. I like to see it there. Oh, it's fine. Just just start. Ooh, very oh, nice yeah. Yes. Yeah. Way to go dark. Okay. Nicely done. Good. I have no idea. Real dark. Yes. Yeah. So, what's going to happen? It's just awesome. It's just awesome. It's not good. No. I'm not good enough. It's just awesome. It's really swirling around. It does happen. I have a whole bunch of ones that they hold on. Bobby you didn't realize I bought such a big bag. painting oh, yeah. so the way that i did that no no that was wet on wet so i was lifting for you the splattering i'm going to take a wet brush with like look how heavily you can't tell but i'm heavily loading up my orange right and so in all of these orange sections i'm going to cover up this and I'm going to splatter. Bring my orange. And Woo. All right, that's fun. And then you can do that with the dark, with the blue as well. Um, your brush might not be wet enough. You need a very wet brush for this. Oh, 
You can also take it with a lot of water and kind of like if there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of water on here, you can kind of just bang it off your hand as well. We still have fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, so don't rush. That's okay. That's okay. I just see like a lot of people cleaning up. So if you guys aren't done. Feel free to stay. We still have 15 minutes left in class. Much nicer what you did on I did the splatter like this. I know, I know, I did too much. And I think it's you think you did too much? Right here, it's okay, I fixed it. Just here. Okay, I, Ooh, I like it. Yeah, there was a big. It looks good though. It looks like it's part of the um, background. Big so I it never makes as much paint as you suggest. You know, I always go with too little of what I mix, and then I have such a heavy hand with my paint mixer. You do. <laughs> I like to spread out. Yeah, it's okay. We all have different ways. Uh, uh, you could do like Um, you could even add like shadows onto a wall, like it's on up against the white. That's what I saw. So, um, green with um, the blue and a little bit of brown, yeah. Oh, yes. How are you? Yes. I, yes, I can, but I, I did not talk to the pussy cats so, like, because I'm in our space. Only one staff. Yeah. Well, you call yourself. Or 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 I hate this. Oh, wonderful. That's I'm safe and warm and yeah. swimming. Yeah. Oh. It, no, no, I'm here with Natalie. I'm here with Bill. We have a nice lunch, and Iris is here too. Everybody, we're getting a big hello from Hawaii. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I just say just do more and just don't say you look dumb and say you're the same as you want to so are you enjoying your resting in the southern place? <laughs> Here it's raining. Love my child, but she was like this age. And what? Stuff, like, man, as my daughter. Oh, you too? You're happy to have a ring? So are you enjoying and relaxing and laughing and laughing? Oh, good, good. That's Oh, good. Yeah, now you're not meant to be on the series. It's a bad image. Yes, they are. Okay, is that better? Hello? Yeah. Did you speak to Norman? Okay, he's doing okay. Oh, by the way, so it's all I got a text on the phone. No, it's the George and Tell me, 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 tell so that because they need an apartment number to send my the, the card to the neighbor. So, yeah. Two o three is the apartment number. Okay. Two o three. I'll do it on my on my laptop tonight. I have the address. Lois gave me the address. She didn't have the apartment. It's twenty-seven ninety-five. I think. Right? She's fine. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. One second. I'm getting some papers. Piece of paper. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Piece of paper. Yeah, they have to. Oh, here. Okay. It's 7925 in the room. Apartment 205, 203. Yeah, it would be Code St. Luke. What are the postal codes? Or we'll mold her up into a little bit of a H four W H four W. It's so good for their vestibulars. Oh, wonderful! Okay, then I can do that. I can do that online on my laptop tonight. So seven ninety five things the apartment two three could say H four W. No, one, no, H4, W, one, three, one, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, Okay, so I can give the neighbors that and I'll send my money in with my card, no problem. I find like the more Oh, you're a sweetheart. We never had those addresses. Especially if they're and I find especially if they're like I don't have the address for card either. I told them I'll just hold on to the door and have her open it. Call Allison and Kiri and send them up for my son the apple. It's the last of the day. Well, they live in the other day. Oh, so I won't say I was going to call the other number, but I can't. Um, not okay, so you gained a proper address. But always I laughed a lot. Oh, we always laugh at the bears. And so enjoy yourself, kiss, kiss, kiss. Do you want to kiss more than I am? Science or is she okay? Natalie yeah. just sent us. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can do it back. You two, I'll just see you at Costco. Yeah.
And oh, and guess what? Nobody told me. She also will have an inspection at her house to know if her house is okay for a senior residence. <laughs> I know her. She's ready to help me. We'll manage. We'll fix our house. My daughter's always like, What? I'm like, There. Well, we'll fix it. Sure. Hold on. Want to say well, hi to uh, it? Iris? Sure. This is this is this is Eliane, and she's in Hawaii. What? Eliane in Hawaii. Back here. Eliane in Hawaii. If you want to hear. Eliane in Hawaii. Say hello. Hello. You were in Tino. Okay. No problem. She can't hear you. How can I ever ever fix this? Look like a normal. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Um, Love you guys. Have fun. Actually, Enjoy yourself. And, just and, just yeah. and then maybe add in that dark spot of like where the top is. You yeah. know, of where that center is. Oh, she so how do I do it for the uh and I'm gonna wash it? Just watch it. It's time to get just work. Yeah, put some orange like right there. I mean, like, oh, you are. Isn't that pretty? The orange, yeah. show, hopefully, yeah. of like what you had, but if not, he can sell Of course, definitely. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. She's creative. Oh, I don't like it. You don't? No, I have to fix oh, this before. Oh, 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 so good. It? Yes, it's strong. strong. We it's still have seven strong. minutes, so don't, oh, don't rush yourselves. We still have seven minutes to work that orange. Um, but you know, there's nothing to write to that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Look for the orange. The line to me. Okay, it's an orange, it's an orange. They got it. Well, if you want the candy, I have did you get some candies? Anybody for that? I had them. Thank you. You can have two. I don't mind. Here, anything. you can have your water back. <laughs> I have the different one. Told you for me to hold it like this and not hold it. I'll come back. It's okay to know. Yeah, here. Oh, here. Here. My daughter. Yeah, she she thinks she's got some. Don't crush yourselves. Here, I And just a bit of water. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to do a vignette eh? to like just stop, yeah, not go to the very edges. Yeah. It took me a long time to to get there. Yeah. 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 What's the matter? What do you don't like is picking up some tomato. Here, here. I don't know anyone's name. Camille. Camille, Camille, Camille. Here, here. Camille, Camille. Yeah. Camille. Yeah. Camille. Yeah. Camille. Don't, don't, don't uh, fall. No. Why do you 
mind that or a great spirit. There we are. Very delicate touch. Very light. Yeah, she's very delicate. Very light and And I spoke to Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> Who's in Hawaii? Your daughter? My daughter and my son. And my son. Oh. They were there in the of the That's why they spoke to me. Boy, they must have a good plan. Oh no, we're gonna make bunnies. Bunny? Like pastel flowers? Eggs. Yeah, that could be a fun one because then everyone's design on their eggs can be different. Yeah, where's your? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Focus, focus. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? What was that? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. Like, oh, how can I? Let me see. What's the problem? Why the other? Why the other orange is disgusting? It's not round. It's not round. No, it is round. Oh, it's not round. Well, it's hiding behind. 